Uh, he was a trailblazer, a comic genius, genius civil rights activist, uh, of course, ran for political office, author, a health and diet guru. All of that describes the Renaissance man we know as Dick Gregory, of course, uh, our longtime friend who was a lover of this show, uh, a friend of this Urban One, Radio One, TV One family. We lost Dick Gregory on Saturday at the age of 84. Uh, the family released a statement that said, quote, it is with enormous sadness that the Gregory family confirms that their father, comedic legend and civil rights activist, Mr. Dick Gregory, Dick Gregory departed this earth tonight in Washington, D.C. Uh, and of course, uh, folks, um, it was uh, just uh, last week where Gregory was hospitalized for what his son describes as a, a serious bacterial infection. Uh, many believe that Dick Gregory was going to uh, come out of that. His family thought so as well, thought he was improving, but uh, he took a turn for the worst on Saturday. And it was around 8.30 or so when uh, Mark Thompson, a uh, radio talk show host on Sirius XM, tweeted that we had lost Dick Gregory. And I, sh I talked to Mark shortly after he was at the hospital with the family. And of course, as news spread all across the country, folks were shocked and saddened by the loss of Dick Gregory. Of course, uh, folks who know his history, he was one of the first black stand-up comics who broke racial barriers in the 1960s, entertaining white and black audiences with his, with his wry wit and satire, using humor to expose the raw truth about race. He also broke barriers when uh, it was Hugh Hefner uh, who invited him to perform at the Playboy Club in Chicago. Uh, and here is uh, some of Dick Gregory in his heyday talking about the sport of baseball. That is the only sport in the world where a Negro can shake a stick at a white man and won't start no ride. <laughs> Of course, uh, it was uh, 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 Gregory who got uh, his big start. When I say big start, first of all, he was already a successful comedian, performing in uh, black comedy clubs all across the country. But he made his way, as I said, performing at the Playboy Club in Chicago at the insistence of Playboy founder Hugh Hefner. He also appeared on Jack Parr's Tonight Show. He joked that his salary went from $250 for seven nights work to $5,000 a night to $3.9 in the next year and a half. Now, Gregory took frequent breaks from his comedy career to focus on civil rights and social issues. He wasn't someone who was simply raising money uh, for like others did. He was actually on the front lines in the struggle uh, for civil rights for African Americans. Dick Gregory was jailed, beaten, also shot, but humor was still one of his tools that he used to fight white supremacy. You can always laugh at problems that's right. Everyone in the whole world knows this is a wrong. So then you can make humor out of it and not a, like you enlightening people. Uh, of course, uh, he was always about uh, enlightening people, and uh, he was, uh, it was stunning to, to hear him talk, uh, to also to see how he was unwilling uh, to back down uh, from folks uh, in many different ways. Now, of course, uh, in a guest column for Variety magazine this month, Gregory called police brutality a hate-filled and blood-soaked stain on humanity. This is what he wrote in that particular piece. Again, somebody uh, who was unwilling uh, to back down. Uh, if these white cops were, kill were killing white folks, white folks' dogs like they're killing my children, white women would have burned police stations down all over America. Now, again, up until a few weeks ago, Gregory was touring the country. He noted on Twitter that he was looking forward to getting back on stage because he had a lot to say about the events in Charlottesville, Virginia. Quote, we have so much work still to be done. The ugly reality on the news proves just that. Now, folks, uh, uh, he is survived by his wife, Lillian, and 10 children. Now, yesterday, uh, in a post on his uh, Facebook page, I want to read this here, and this is from um, his, uh, uh, one of his children. Say it this here. I was probably 25 years old before I realized my father called many people champ. I was clearly paying attention, yet I never heard it other than when he was calling me. One of his finest gifts was the ability to make you sit up and pay attention. For a week, I watched my father cause some of the sharpest medical minds to sit up and pay attention. What began a little over a week ago as a simple, simple urinary tract infection wreaked havoc on my father's slim frame. Events were set in motion that ultimately proved to be too much. A bifurcated thoracic an aortic aneurysm ultimately was too big a blow. 
For a lifetime, my father took all the hits. However, this hit was too much. A life heavily sacrificed had ultimately taken its toll. Years of severe fasting, not for health but for social change, had damaged the vascular system long ago. He always reminded us many of his fasts were not about his personal health, but an attempt to heal the world. A routine few days, a few days in the hospital suddenly turned dire. My father transitioned encircled by his family and love. It was actually purifying and a blessing to bear witness to unbridled familiar love and peaceful understanding. For a week, my family stood 24 hour vigil over our father, even when it appeared routine. Again, I'm reading from Dick Gregory's Facebook page. Way too much laughter for a hospital room, I am certain. From comedy to civil rights to a life dedicated to equality, he never waned. Immeasurable generational sacrifice. A transformative blockbuster comedian who obliterated the color line. He quickly realized that the inequities and travesties of life were no laughing matter. There is no question humanity is better for it. We will allow his legendary history to stand for itself. Generations will delve into his sacrifice, comedic genius, folk, 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 focus, and aptitude. For now, we simply want to reflect on his service and grace, civil rights, women's rights, children's rights, human rights, disabled rights, animal rights. Dick Gregory's DNA is virtually on every movement for fairness and equality for all living things on this planet. He was rarely one to rest and never one to stop championing for peace. Hopefully, now he may find some semblance of them both. A healthy dose of wit and wisdom just arrived in heaven. Of that, I am absolutely certain. Dick Gregory is eternal. He sacrificed so others could. The true beauty was that the others were always the disenfranchised and the underdog. There's a profound amount of ugly in the world today. Consider some slight discomfort to make a life a little better as we pay tribute to a lifelong crusader. I miss you already, Pop. You were undoubtedly a fine human being and the coolest dad. It was a pleasure and an honor being your wingman. Loving and lovable, his son Christian. I'm going to go to the phone right now and talk with uh, Carl Nelson. Carl Nelson was on this show with Dick Gregory the last time he appeared on June 23rd. They were here to talk about uh, Gregory being honored uh, at a lecture series here in D.C. that weekend. Carl, good morning. Good morning, Roland. Um, uh, it is certainly, um, I, I didn't know that that day would be Dick's last, but I'll be perfectly honest with you, uh, Carl, when I saw Dick, uh, when he came in that morning, he wasn't his usual self. Uh, I could tell that he also had lost weight. Uh, and um, it, it was interesting just listening to him that day. Y'all decided to honor him with the lecture series. Why? Because we felt he never got his due. A lot of people like Dick Gregory, they do so much for us as a people. But yet still, we don't get a chance to show them how much we appreciate them. So we selected Dick Gregory for that cause. And uh, you spent lots of time with him. He was a very close uh, friend. He was family, if you will, uh, to Urban One, now the new name of the parent company, Radio One and TV One. Uh, just what is it in terms of how Dick Gregory was in private that many people may not realize publicly? You know, one of the things, uh, Roland, is that Dick knew just about everybody. You throw out a name, we've we're talking, you know, Marvin Gaye, there's a story. Marlon Brando, there's a story. John Lennon, RFK, JFK, there's a story behind everything. Because Dick Gregory's met them all. Uh, John Lennon, for example, uh, when John Lennon and Yoko Ono were in Europe and they were they, you know, like having this rally against the Vietnam War and talking about peace, and they were talking with Greg a, a lot about it, and Greg told him, just imagine if... Uh, there was no religion. If there was no money. Just imagine all these different things. Then we'd have a world full of peace. That's what John Lennon used to write his hit song, Imagine. And many people didn't know that. But that was where the inspiration came from. Um, I'm in the studio right now with E. Faye Williams. Of course, uh, she, a longtime friend of Dick Gregory. She's the national chair of the National Congress of Black Women. Uh, e. Faye, uh, we were in L.A., was it last year? Yes. 
it was last yeah, year, years ago, actually. Uh, two years ago, yeah. we were in Los Angeles, uh, where Dick Gregory finally got uh, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, you, Joe Madison, and others uh, worked hard to raise that money. Uh, there were so many comedians who came out to celebrate Dick. Uh, to Carl's point, uh, even though we know him as this comedic legend, he did not get uh, the full measure of respect, if you will. You're absolutely right, and we certainly enjoyed doing that. It was so easy to raise the funds to do it because, as uh, was said earlier, everybody knew Dick Gregory and wanted to make sure and wondered why he hadn't gotten the star years before. So we were excited to do that. And I, I'm proud of the fact that the family allowed me to be there during this last week of his life, holding his hand, Ayana and I rubbing his feet, whatever. I had the right, she had the left, and we would joke with him that when, when he got out of there, we were going to be professionals at uh, rubbing people's feet. Uh, we had a great time. Saturday, he had a wonderful day. It was the best day since he'd been in the hospital. And see, that's what's interesting because uh, doctors often say that when someone is near death, uh, they have this, this, this moment yes. where it's, it's, it's spring-like, where they're a uh, I, I, I understand that uh, Bill Cosby called uh, Dick yes. Gregory Saturday morning and had him cracking up and laughing. Mm -hmm. And many of the family thought that Dick was going to uh, get released that day or Absolutely. the next day. Actually, for the, the past three or four days before he passed away, we talked about his going home. And I think he, he knew. I, it's, it was almost like he orchestrated his death because um, on Saturday, as we were having a great time, he finally looked at television and, you know, said what he usually said is, you know, that's not what it looks like. As he was looking at the situation in Boston and all of the protesting and all, and, you know, he always would remind us, stay woke because, you know, what you're seeing there may not be what things are like. But uh, he, he discussed things with us. He was, he was his old self. He was using a few words against people, you know, who were disturbing <laughs> the room that night. And uh, he just seemed to have had a great time. And I'm, I'm just proud and honored that the family allowed me to have the last words with him after they had seen him for the last time. They invited me in to be there alone with him. And I said to him, jokingly, as he lay there looking like he was just asleep, I said, you know, you're always talking and you want everybody to listen to you. Well, tonight you're going to listen to me. So I had my opportunity opportunity to tell him that there are so many of us who are going to carry on his work. We formed the Dick Gregory Foundation, and we plan to carry on that and to do many of the things that he taught us to do. Uh, well, certainly uh, it was uh, e emotional for many. Yes. Uh, a lot of people were paying visit uh, with him. We're going to talk. Uh, we come back with Carlos Campbell, who also yes, uh, a, a longtime friend of his as well. Uh, and again, folks, uh, we, we have uh, uh, extensive coverage all uh, throughout this show about the life and legacy of Dick Gregory. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. Ah! That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.